Hey everyone, so today I wanna to talk to you all about loss of taste and smell when it comes to COVID-19 infection. So, you know, in many upper respiratory tract uh, infections that are caused by viruses, there are situations where you can lose your sense of smell, right? But that typically happens because the virus is causing a level of congestion, right? So you get that nasal congestion, you can't really breathe, nose gets stuffy, and so that affects your taste. But that's not what seems to be happening in COVID-19, right? Nasal congestion is actually not a big part of COVID-19. So what's happening? Well, you know, I, I, I decided to do this because I've actually been contacted recently by a couple of people, both of which lost their sense of taste and smell for like six, seven months, okay? Both of them got COVID back in March and up to, even to this point today, they still don't have their sense of taste and smell back. And if you look in the literature right now, we're seeing more and more cases of that, all right? In COVID-19, that can last for days, weeks, or as we see, months, and for some individuals, it may not come back. The problem is actually not happening due to the virus infecting the olfactory nerve, right? So the olfactory nerve is what gives us our sense of smell, okay? What it seems like is happening is the virus is actually infecting this cell, right? So if you look at this, you see something called the olfactory nerve, and then you see something else called the sustentacular cells. I know, it's a crazy name, right? Sustentacular cells. I don't know, I always thought that was neat when I learned it from my uh, physiology professor. A uh, shout out to Dr. David Cook. And so these sustentacular cells, right, in the olfactory system, they're supportive cells. So if you think of the olfactory nerve, it just kind of hanging out like this, and then this is the nerve that's going back up to the brain, it needs something in, port, in place to just kind of support it, right? Support it on this side, support it on this side, to kind of keep it up. So it turns out that the spike two, I'm sorry, the spike protein is binding to the ACE2 receptor, not on the neurons, but actually on these supportive sustentacular cells. So ACE2 is on the, on the sustentacular cells. When the virus infects the cells, remember my other video, I told you guys what happens when the virus infects the cells, takes over the machinery, cell waves the white flag, and the other natural killer cells come and destroy it. And so those sustentacular cells are dying, all right? And so those support cells for the olfactory nerve are dying. Also, another part on the edge of the olfactory nerve, right? So if you look at this right here, there's the olfactory nerve. And then you have at the very top, which are these little cilia, okay? Cilia are like little hairs that just kind of beat and so they're sitting there and they're what actually brings some of those scents over towards your nose and over towards your olfactory nerve. But those cilia also express what? ACE2 receptor. So if the virus spike protein grabs onto the ACE2 receptor on the cilia, infects the cilia, it kills the cilia. So now you've got dead cilia, you've got dead sustentacular cells. The olfactory nerve doesn't have support and it doesn't have the cells to kind of beat to bring the bring the uh, whatever smells are there and to sing the signals to the brain. So basically that olfactory nerve ends up dying. Now, when it comes to dead nerves, you have two parts of the nervous system, all right? The central nervous system, which is gonna be your brain, spinal cord, then the peripheral nervous system. So those are your nerves going off to your arms, legs, and in this case, you know, going out outside of the brain. Typically peripheral nerves grow back. And that is why you know, when you someone can cut their finger off, you get it soon enough, you can reattach it, they can actually regain uh, movement in their finger. You know, so, so these peripheral nerves have a tendency to grow back, sometimes they don't, right? So for other people that, you know, may relate to this differently, anyone that's had any type of, of uh, like body augmentation, they may know that, you know, something like getting a breast job, well, what can happen is you can lose the nerves that are there um, in that area, and then you may not ever have sensation there again. So these things happen. They happen in different aspects of life, just giving you different examples. But in the case of COVID-19, it's the virus infecting the sustentacular cells and the cilia, which basically lead to lack of support for the olfactory nerve. That nerve ends up dying. And if it does, you may or may not get your taste back. I had COVID-19. I lost my sense of taste and smell. It lasted for about two weeks, but it came back. But again, some individuals, it's going on six, seven, or eight, nine months. And that is what we mean when we say, we talk about these long chronic comorbidities. Because I tell you, you may not think it's a big deal to lose your sense of taste and smell, 
but almost all of these situations end up leading to malnutrition, um, significant weight loss, because it doesn't matter how good food is, if it doesn't taste well or if you can't taste it, then you may not want to eat it. So in any case, just a little bit of information today. Remember the word for the day is sustentacular cells. All right, y'all have a good one.